Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be taking a look at a new board. It was a generic board that I found on Banggood. It's an all one flight controller which resembles the Airbot F4 Pro Corner. Now you might say, oh, this is a clone, but it's not. It's just the OEM rebranded and uh, it is actually branded into something. In the packaging, it's a happy model. So let's go ahead and talk about this guy. So as you can tell here, the first thing you'll notice is the gyro is soft mounted. It's soft mounted in this plastic casing here. And uh, what it is, it has like some silicone resin or gel or something under it. So it keeps it very nice and, and uh, soft mounted. So it is an all-in-one flight controller. So what that means basically it's a PDB, it has a, you know, just PDB, ESC, telemetry, and it's a flight controller itself. So let's just talk about some of the specs. So it's an F4, it does have OSD, it has an SD card expansion, it does have a current sensor, it even has a small LC filter for your video feed, which is pretty cool to see. And it has the ESC telemetry pads all set up for you, which is pretty awesome. So let's go ahead and take a look here. So right now if you wanted to connect this into your quadcopter, I believe it would go in like this. You got your battery, your, your USB on the left and your battery in the back here. Now this is a TVS diode. This helps with voltage spikes that's going into the system, which is very nice to see and it's very well thought out. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the pads. So motor in beta flight obviously would be motor one, two, three, four, and it is the correct orientation as you can see, motor one, motor two, motor three, and motor four. Now let's take a look here. Now if you wanted to connect your ESC, this is this is the pretty cool part, and this is what really um, keeps the overall build clean, especially if you're installing the ESC telemetry. So here obviously would be the power for your ESC and here's the ground, the, the large wires that would go on your ESC. This is where they would get connected. Here you'd have the motor one, which is the signal. Here it's RX one. Now what would you put install on RX one? Well, you would install the telemetry. Telemetry would go here. So on every single side here in the middle, it's always RX one, which is the telemetry for your ESC. And they even provide you with an extra ground. So you could ground your small wire here also. So that's pretty nice, it's well thought out. Now RX1, if you want to install telemetry, you would have to go to Betaflight and you would have to go to the ports tab and on under UART1, enable the ESC telemetry because this is RX1. So very simple, plain and awesome. All right, let's move up here. So here we have a boot button. It's pretty nice. Here we have a couple of LEDs. Okay, that's cool. Now here, this is kind of interesting here. Now, as you can tell, hold on, let's see if we can zoom in here for you. All right, so as you could tell here, hopefully you could tell, it says RAM and then it says five volt and then it says BAT. So what does that mean? That means any pad that's called RAM, you could either change it to a five volt if you bridge it this way, or if you want it to be the battery voltage, you'd have to remove this bridge and bridge it with the battery. So the middle one would be bridged with the battery if you wanted the battery voltage and for the five volt, it would look like this. Now it comes pre-soldered to five volt, which is pretty awesome and very nice to see. And we'll get into, I'll show you where those are. Now the bottom one here is any pad that's called three to five volts right there. You could change it either to a five volt or a three volt and you would bridge it either like this or like this, whatever you wanted. For example, if you had a spectrum, that's what you, that's what you would do here. So, all right, pretty simple. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the other side. So on the other side, like I mentioned, we do have the SD card expansion. We have the Betaflight OSD. And this thing does have a barometer. I forgot to mention that. It's right there. So that's pretty cool. That's for like altitude hold and all that kind of crazy good stuff. But it doesn't have any ports, I remember, for uh, GPS. So that's uh, that's something a downside for some people. We do have a couple tantalum capac capacitors right there. And we do have some nice, some nice filtration. I believe this is the LC filter here for the camera. So let's take a look up here. So this is where our camera VTX would be installed. So we have the first two here, as, as you can tell, ground, ground, RAM, RAM. Now the RAM, like I mentioned, whatever you bridged that pad to, which is this one here, currently it's bridged to five volts. So these, both of these would be five volts. So if you want to have a VTX that does not take five volts, you're gonna have to take your battery from uh, here. I mean, your power for here, from here for your VTX. So currently these are five volts. So yeah, you would pop up your camera from here. Here's the video in, the VI, and here's the video out. And yeah, I would take the power from my camera only from here in ground. I'd ground my VTX from here and take the positive from here. And uh, yeah, the video out, the yellow wire would go to your VTX right there. Pretty nice, simple. Now, this is kind of strange because, you know, you have to be careful how you solder these wires because look where they put the um, SD card. So if you soldered your wires in from the bottom, there's no way you're going to install the SD card. And if you solder it in, you know, too far out, yeah. So you got to be very careful with that. 
So that's not very well thought out. Actually, I just noticed it right now. So yeah, take that into consideration here. So if we take a look at these pads right here, we have the buzzer negative and then a five volt. So this would power up your buzzer if you have wanted to install a buzzer. Ground, five volt LED, your LED signal. And here we have three grounds next to each other right there. And here we have a three volt, which is a static three volt. And then here's a five volt. And here is the three volt to five volt that we could enable on the other side, which is right there. You can read that on the other side. So you can set that up to whatever you want. Now, if we take a look down here, we have RX1 and TX1. This is UART1. But if you have ESC telemetry, don't use these because it's already being used for the ESC telemetry up here. So yeah, avoid these. <clears throat> Now, if you had an S bus receiver, you'd want to go ahead and set it up on the RX3 because RX3 is inverted. And what's so cool about this board, you could even remove uh, the inverter, which is pretty nice. They make it very simple. And RX6 and TX6, you could also enable an inverter for it, but it's currently disabled. So that's pretty awesome. And um, that's really it. I mean, it looks like a nice board. It's pretty thick. It's 1.7 millimeters. However, it's a little bit bigger than most uh, boards. So take that into consideration. It's about... Uh, from the edges like this, it's a uh, 42.5. That's worst case scenario. It's like 42.2, but 42.5. Make sure if your quadcopter can fit 42.5 before purchasing it, because you can see a normal board basically usually just ends up to here, but this has this huge little thing portraying out here. So they needed extra space, and that's how they did it, which is pretty nice. But it won't fit all. Uh, it'll fit most flames, but you know, some, some of the newer ones, some not newer ones, some specific ones, it won't fit. So take that into consideration. Uh, what else do we have here? And, um, yeah, I mean, the copper is pretty nice. It seems like it has a lot, nice copper layer. The overall build quality is very nice for being a generic post. So I really did like this and that's why I'm going to be installing it. Now, just for reference, if you wanted to know how to enable and disable, uh, the inverter on RX uh, on UART 6 and 3. This is how you do it. Uh, this one here is for UART 3, which is RX 6. So if you wanted to go ahead and uh, disable the inverter, you would bridge these two, as I believe. Yeah. And if you wanted to enable the inverter, you would have to remove this little uh, resistor here. So, yeah. All right. So... Yeah, well, that's going to conclude it for this video, guys. That's all I can really say. It looks nice. I am going to be building it. I really want to try this out. And I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. And please consider joining my Patreon. Help me support this channel. Help me support this mission. Uh, this month, I'm doing a lot of awesome giveaways. I'm doing the Mark Motors, the 2306, a DYS Shark, and uh, two more things. I still haven't decided what to give away just yet. And uh, I will be announcing the winners for the budget quadcopters soon for YouTube. And that's it, guys. So I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And I uh, will see you next time. See you guys. Take care.